Human beings are moral agents. We make moral choices. Uh, a moral choice or a moral action proceeds from our deliberate will and is either good or evil. As human beings, we're given this remarkable capacity of free will to choose between different things. It's a risky gift that's been given to us. It's a quality that God bestows to us. It's a spiritual capacity, and it has the attendant dangers that we could choose the wrong things that are damaging to ourselves and to the world around us. God wants us to always choose what is good, and he desires that, but he gives us this freedom as moral agents to choose, and we have to choose well. When we choose something that is against the way of nature or God's specific command, then we call the action not moral, but immoral. The temptation and fall of Adam and Eve was painted by William Blake in the early 19th century. Blake was a committed Christian and one of the seminal figures in the Romantic movement. He was fascinated by the text of John Milton's epic poem, Paradise Lost, which describes the fall of man, including, as we see here, the temptation of Eve. Blake's painting is remarkable, I think, in its sensory depiction of the serpent, Satan, coiled around Eve. You'll remember that God has given Adam and Eve the Garden of Eden. They have complete freedom within the garden to eat of the fruits of any tree, save that of the fruits of the tree of knowledge. Satan, in the guise of a serpent, appears to Eve and encourages her to taste the fruit. And this is the moment that Blake depicts. Notice the way the serpent has coiled itself around the waist and the naked form of Eve. It's a moment of high drama. The apple, the fruit of the tree of knowledge, is in the mouth of the serpent, which is joined to the mouth of Eve. It's a highly sensory depiction of this moment. Adam stands to the side, as yet he's unaware of the drama unfolding behind him. I think it's poignant the way he looks up at the fruit of the tree of knowledge, apparently unaware of what Eve is doing behind him. However, Blake signals the impending upheaval and disruption caused by Eve's disobedience. Notice the lightning that forks around the scene and the darkness that suggests that they will soon be expelled from Eden. When we choose something that is immoral, we call it a sin as Christians because we believe that all our actions also relate to God and his will for us as creator and as father. Sin, the original word comes from hamartia in the Greek, which means to miss the mark. Think of an archer who misses the mark. When we sin, we miss the mark of our lives. We don't become what we're meant to become by acts that are immoral. There are two kinds of sin, mortal and venial. Uh, the venial sins are the, the smaller sins that lead us maybe to veer away a little bit from what we should be and do some harm, but mortal sins are much more serious. Uh, Saint John in his first letter says that there's a kind of sin that leads to death, hence mortal. Not physical death, although that can happen too, but spiritual death, where that relationship of love and life in God is broken down. For a sin to be mortal, it has to be a serious matter, a grave matter. We have to know about it, we have to know that it really is sinful, and we have to give our free consent to it, which means we can't be doing it under force or when we're not in a fully conscious state. God wants us to not sin, to be perfect, as he is perfect, to choose the good so that we can thrive. This is a panel painting by the 14th century Sienese master Duccio. It is just one of the panels which form the great altarpiece known as the Maestar, 
which Duccio was commissioned to erect above the high altar in Siena Cathedral in the early years of the 14th century. The central portion of the Maya star depicted the Madonna and she was surrounded by scenes depicting the life of Christ. This huge double-sided altarpiece stayed in place in Siena Cathedral for nearly 200 years after its commission, but then it was sadly subject to the vicissitudes of fate and was broken up. Now, about 50 of the original 70 panels survive. Many of these are still in the museum in Siena, but some, like this one, have gone elsewhere. This can now be seen in the Frick Collection in New York. Duccio here is depicting the scene described in three Gospels, whereby Christ is subject to three temptations by Satan. Duccio depicts the last temptation. Satan has taken Christ to a high mountain. He offers Christ all the kingdoms of the world if Christ will bow down and worship him. Notice the way that Duccio positions Christ centrally on the mountain, two angels behind him and Satan gestures to the cities depicted amidst the mountains. Duccio was an inhabitant of Siena and painted and lived there for most of his life. And it's interesting how the topography of Siena is reflected in these little mini cities in the mountains. The painting reminds us that evil can tempt us in many ways, especially when we're feeling weak. But look at the figure of Christ standing strong. He rejects the devil's temptation and tells him to go away. How do we do what is good? There's a great challenge in that as fallen human beings. We have what we call a disordered concupiscence after the original sin. We're born with emotions and feelings and passions that pull us in different ways. And those feelings are not always a true indicator of what is good. And therefore, we need to have some restraint of those things. Our intellects are also darkened or things are opaque to us. We can't always see the good. So we need to form our conscience, this faculty within us that God has given us to know between good and evil and to form that. We're in the light of Christ's teaching and in the light of good observation about the world and society, what we call the natural law. And finally, most of all, to bring it all together, we need grace because this isn't possible by our own efforts alone. We need the help of God's grace.